Yeah. And up until now, I understood that you were building metal airplanes. But I just looked at this thing, and it looks to be all wood. Have you changed uh, your building techniques? Well, actually, that, that means you pay close attention. This actual airplane is like all of our others. It is an aluminum structured airplane. Uh, however, we did come in and antique this airplane to make it look like wood because the original structure was wood. So that was one of the replica things that we did on this airplane to make it look more authentic. Now, what is the story behind what you've done here? Well, this here is a full-scale Blario 11. Model 11 was an interesting aircraft. It was the first one that crossed the English Channel, July 25th, 1909. This is a full-scale replica of that aircraft with the Rotec radial engine on it. And the purpose for this aircraft being built is to reenact that flight. Someone is actually going to get in one of these airplanes and fly across the English Channel just like they did nearly 100 years ago, or more than 100 years ago. That's correct. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Pascal Kramer from Luxembourg will be doing that. Now, how did you get in touch with him, or how did he get in touch with you in order to, to get this project going? Uh, he, we met at Oshkosh last year. I had my three-quarter scale uh, Blario there, and he was a Blario historian. When he saw that airplane, he kind of went nuts. Uh, he, I was wasn't near the airplane at the time, but he waited, and a few minutes later I showed up, and we sat down and talked about it, and he asked me if I'd consider doing this project, and like always, I said, I'd love to be involved in a project that's something unique like this, and we set out and built him a new airplane. Now, to build this airplane, how did you go from what, you, what his idea was to what is here now? Well, that was kind of an interesting group of events. Uh, Pascal is a historian on, on Bolero aircraft specifically, so he collected just a tremendous amount of data. He, he just overwhelmed me with, with original technical things, drawings, uh, pictures that we could scale and get data off of, and that's basically where we started. We started with some original stuff. This airplane is very historically accurate uh, dimensionally, very correct. Uh, we're using the original airfoil on the airplane, uh, the original bedstead landing gear, uh, and then we've antiqued it to look like wood. So the significant difference here is we've used some aluminum versus wood, but dimensionally the airplane is historically incredibly accurate. Now, was there any problem working with someone that is so, I mean, you talk about a historian, and historians are renowned for their tenacity and they want it to be perfect. Did you have any problems working with that type of an individual? Well, we, we, we uh, bickered a few times over things. We always came to a logical conclusion. There was a few things that we, we liked to have done different ways, just minor things, but we did shift the cockpit a little bit forward for CG purposes, just a few inches. Uh, from a historical point of view, he'd rather have had it rearward, but he's also a pilot, a highly qualified pilot, and he understood the things that we had to do. So so we talked about each and everything that we needed to do and, and worked it out and came to a conclusion that we were both happy with. So. Now, safety-wise, I mean, you're talking an airplane that flew back in the 1900s. We've changed some of the materials on it. Is there any of the control systems or anything else that had to be changed so that you <clears throat> felt a little safer with it? Actually, that, that's what I do here at Aerodrome Airplanes. We modify the old airplanes to make them fly a little bit more like new airplanes. And, and one of the significant things on this airplane, it was originally a wing warper. We used the original cord and plan view of the airplane. And you, I don't know if you can see here with the camera, but we've actually built an aileron into the airplane and, and covered it both sides. So we do have actual aileron actuations, but when the airplane flies over, you don't see the ailerons or anything. So, the, so we, yeah, we've done a lot of those things: control, harmony, and, and setups. We've, we've tweaked, we've changed the angle of incidence and horizontal stabilizer. That was mainly due to the fact the original airplane was very aft CG, and it was a flying tail in the original airplane, very unsafe. So, what we've done by moving that seat forward, uh, we used a little heavier engine. We were able to get the CG in the range it should have been. We we're able to put the tail on in a conventional zero manner and make, make the airplane a uh, much more modern flying airplane. What type of power was used on the original airplane? Uh, you can talk to Pascal more detail on that. There was a lot of different engines, but the most common was the Anzani. And uh, the Anzani was around the 28 to 30 horsepower range. Uh, now, with the Rotec radial, we have 110 horsepower. So we've actually uncovered some very unique flight qualities of this airplane that uh, the original pilots probably never even understood or knew. Uh, there's some interesting things in the way the airfoil is shaped on this. Uh, at initial takeoff, the airplane will accelerate down the runway, it'll leave the ground, and it'll, it'll kind of feel like it's stuck in ground effect. When you start to climb, it will not climb out of ground effect until you put a high angle of attack on the airplane. And that's the last thing a pilot wants to do is put a high angle attack on an airplane when he feels like it's not flying, it doesn't, it's mushing. But once you get the high angle attack, the large camber airfoil generates a tremendous amount of lift and the airplane climbs wonderful. But it's an abnormal thing for pilots to experience. So, so they never had the power initially to get that angle of incidence and really climb. So we've, we've discovered some neat things about it. Right. Now, for this trip, uh, 
and using the radial engine. Have you had to extend the, the range as far as fuel or anything like that? Yeah, we have modern fuel tanks. You know, we have 12 plus gallons in the airplane. He has approximately a two hour range in the airplane. So it, it you know, I ain't fly over water serious stuff, but anything beyond just normal flight is what it should be for us. You know, it should be a two hour endurance and a 26 minute flight should be a non-issue. Okay. Now, are you going to be offering this in as one of your stable of aircraft or is this going to be a one-off? Well, it was initially going to be a one-off. Uh, the test pilot that flew this aircraft for us did all the initial testing. Uh, absolutely fell in love with it and he said he wants the very first kit. So my company test pilot has ordered the first kit from me. So it will be in kit production. It will be offered for $12,495. It'll be available in about uh, 1st of March, 2nd uh, of second week of March, something like that. So it'll be very, coming very soon. And when do we expect to have this uh, fly across the English Channel? Uh, July 25th, 2009. So if somebody wanted more information on this airplane and the other that you've got, where do we get a hold of it? Uh, www.aerodromeaeroplanes.com or our phone number, 816-230-8585. And where are you physically located? Okay. Uh, 929 Northwest, Road 1571, Holden, Missouri, 64040. Thanks for watching your time.